the first question that was asked by the interviewer was have you worked on wake frequency calculations for thermoval and the answer yes i'd worked on thermoval calculations can you suggest that what if the wake frequency calculation fails what are the possible solutions that you can use in order to pass the thermoval from the wake frequency calculations there are many ways so he said list down what all ways can you use to do that so here are the following ways to do this the first way is by reducing the u length of thermoval so this is typically the first method that is used which is to reduce the u length of the thermoval so when we reduce the u length of the thermoval we try that now should it pass by the wake frequency test as per asme ptc 19.3 but what happens is there are certain client requirements that you need to keep the u length up till two third of the pipe or ten times the diameter of the thermoval. So for such cases, there are certain limitations that come towards reducing the u length. So if we can reduce the u length and keep within such criteria, or we can ask for an exception, then we can use this method. What if this method is not applicable or we can't use this? Then we can increase the tip diameter or the thickness of the thermoval. Now every solution here has some pros and some cons so what happens here is if you increase the thickness the response time of the thermoval gets affected so the response time would increase so if that is acceptable to the client then we might go ahead with this particular solution if this solution doesn't work then we can increase the base thickness of the thermoval so basically this thickness of the thermoval can be increased but again there are few uh, important points to be noted this thermoval would be inserted in a nozzle so we need to see the nozzle id and this od should not be so great that it's not able to fit inside the uh, id of the nozzle that care we need to take and especially if the nozzle has cladding to it or the thermoval has cladding to it and the schedule of the nozzle etc has to be seen if this is not feasible then we can install the thermoval on an elbow so the elbow installation of thermoval is another option where the wake frequency as per asme uh, ptc 19.3 they don't say that then you don't have to do wake frequency calculations but majority of the time because of such an installation the uh, velocity is greatly reduced how if you see let's imagine that this is an elbow and we insert a thermoval here so the tip as per ASME uh, PTC 19.3 should be facing towards the flow that is the recommended installation practice so here's the flow and what happens is majority of the velocity is hitting the tip so the uh, probability for one Kerman vertices to be formed reduces greatly so this is another way where you can uh, use if your wake frequency calculation is uh, failing for your thermo well the next thing that we can use is increasing the rating of the thermoval. This indirectly is increasing the schedule or thickness of the thermoval. So what if we go from 150 rating to 300 rating? Yes, that is another option that can be used. Or we can go ahead with special type of thermovals, which are called as, uh, you know, you have a spike kind of things wounded around the thermoval there are various manufacturers have different name for it like an example could be screwton well thermovals by Vika or twisted square thermovals by rosemount so such thermovals greatly um, break in the von Kerman vertices and reduce the effect of having these uh, vertices create vibrations that can in turn damage your thermoval so this was about the thermoval question now if you're finding these videos valuable then you could subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon so every saturday you can learn a new video a new educational video thank you so now let's move on to our next question what are the various types of tapping available for orifice was the question so commonly the types of tappings available are corner tapping flange tapping and pipe tapping Yes, there is something like a uh, vena contractor tapping and ddy2 tapping but these three are the predominantly used in the industry now first we we'll look into these three tappings so the next question was that what is the application like you know which tapping is suitable for our application 
uh, like they give an example if it's a one and a half inch line size should i go for pipe tapping should i go for flange typing or should i go for corner flange tapping so for that case let's look into that for corner tappings they usually use for smaller sizes because the vena contractor would come at a smaller distance from the uh, dp created hence we can measure it very close to the uh, orifice or the dp meter hence we go for corner tappings so in corner tappings especially a meter called as integral orifice meter is used so uh, as a thumb rule we can say for line sizes that are one and a half inch or smaller we usually go for such uh, integral orifice assemblies now let's look into the flange tappings these are one of the most most widely used tappings and these type tappings are usually um, there is depends now sometimes it's piping department who provides us this kind of flanges uh, flanges having the drills inside them or we can also take it from the instrument vendor these are usually used for one and a half inch line sizes above and the flange standard yeah that's a good one it's 16 as may be 16.36 so this is the flange standard that we use for uh, orifice flanges and not as may be 16.5 or 16.47 now let us look into the third type of tapping which is pipe tappings now these are specially used for very large line sizes why because the restriction that is created for such line sizes the vena contractor is very far away from the uh, dp uh, device so for that case we need to measure that dp at a longer distance from the uh, restriction now these line sizes are a little critical uh, so for that case this usually requires client approval because the drilling has to be done on on the pipe so exact location of where it is located the drill we need to coordinate well with the piping department for such cases now the next question is that is 150 rating acceptable for orifice meters because we are talking about no orifice so they had this question now you might assume that uh, it could be acceptable but the answer is no it's not acceptable why let's look into it that why is it not acceptable so the first thing is that for orifice we discussed that for flange tappings we need to drill the hole inside the flange so due to mechanical integrity of the flange that which gets affected by drilling we cannot do this thing second is since we drill hole in the flanges for for measuring this dp the overall strength of your flange will reduce dramatically and thus 150 rating might not be suitable so hence we usually start with 300 rating for orifice meters but for restriction orifice meters where there is no tapping to be drilled you might see 150 rating for those cases also if you want to prove the standard which is as may be 16.36 the standard for orifice flanges also starts with 300 rating only so in that case we can also have a standard which supports this understanding also there is a small gift for you and before we get to the gift uh, if you like this video then please subscribe and click the bell icon so that you know you can receive these videos every saturday i hope i can provide little value to your career so uh, here is a small gift which is an ebook on pip instrumentation standards it's in free ebook and almost there have been 1500 plus downloads from engineers from companies like shell dupont technip worley etc so i think you might find this ebook valuable the link is given in the description below also, if you have any doubts, you can, you know, contact me via LinkedIn or through my website page or on to YouTube comments, whatever you're comfortable with. Thank you. And I hope that you have a good and a successful career ahead.